Well, we are back to these morning or these daily videos that I, I hope are a way to serve you, uh, whoever you may be, maybe even your whole family, as a video you can watch together or on your own and uh, just think through scripture. So we're going to start going through over these next three weeks, we're going to go through Philippians chapter three and four. Uh, but really, before we jump into that, I wanted to do a quick review of where we'd been in Philippians, right? This spring, uh, this winter and spring, we'd been going through Philippians in both junior high and senior high youth group. So uh, it feels like forever ago that we were meeting there in the youth room and going through it. So I wanted to just quickly review what, what's going on with Philippians. What do you need to know? What do you need to keep in mind as you read this letter to understand it? And actually, before I really jump into that, I want to think about uh, a song that was very popular back in the 1960s. It's a song that I'm actually sure you've heard, even though it's from the 60s. It's by a group called The Temptations called My Girl, right? And uh, the way it starts, maybe you're familiar, is that I've got sunshine on a cloudy day. When it's cold outside, I've got the month of May. I guess you'd say, what can make me feel this way? It's my girl. My girl, there's, there's all this great harmonization, right? You know the song I'm talking about. And it's this great song. I love the way it captures the way uh, love for a certain person, just an infatuation even with a certain person, can just change how you feel. No matter what your circumstances are, it's cold outside, right? It's gray out, whatever, right? You're, you're joyful, you're happy because of my girl, my girl, my girl. I'm talking about my girl, right? Um, that song kind of captures Paul's attitude in Philippians. He's not talking about my girl, um, and it's not really even a love song that Paul has in mind. No, he's, he's thinking about what it means to share in the life of Christ. And being able to share in the life of Christ just changes everything. His circumstances are terrible, way worse than it being cold outside, right? Uh, he's in prison. He's suffering. The Philippians are suffering. Paul faces all sorts of suffering. And he's able to be like, hey, even though these things are true, what can make me feel this way? What can make me still feel joyful? And to tell you as the Philippians and tell you as a Christian here in the 21st century to be joyful, it's Jesus. It's sharing life in Christ. All right? So no matter what the circumstances are, you're in Christ. And so you can be joyful. That's really what Philippians uh, at least one of the main points that F Paul has in mind in Philippians. So actually, as you review, what I'd encourage you to do is read through the whole letter in one sitting. You can do it. It's, I think it would take 15 minutes. Maybe if you're as a family, you can take turns reading a chapter out loud. Um, but read through the whole thing. Maybe even do it more than once. Like Do it a couple different days in a row. Like Read through and really hear the whole letter, right? One thing I don't think we do enough is hear scripture read. That's how most of the church throughout history received God's word. They heard it, right? We always kind of pick up our Bibles and we read it quietly. We talk about reading our Bible as having our quiet time, right? Uh, we don't read out loud. No, read out loud. Read out to yourself. Read out loud amongst others. Hear God's word. Um, and here in Philippians, Paul is writing to a whole church in Philippi, right? He says he's writing to all the saints in Christ Jesus who are at Philippi with the overseers and deacons. And it's just a church that would have been over in, in this Greece. They would have heard the letter, they would have heard the letter read out loud. Uh, so Paul was actually the person that God used to start this church in Philippi. So they knew him from the very beginning. You can read about that in Acts 16. He traveled, uh, if you read that story, he traveled to Macedonia after having a vision in the night. And he, he, he came across there in Philippi, this woman named Lydia. And Acts says that uh, the Lord opened her heart to pay attention to what was said by Paul. And from that small start, a loving partnership grew between the church and Philippi and Paul's apostolic gospel ministry where he was going out all around the Roman world spreading the gospel. Right? They were key partners for that traveling missionary. And you can just tell as you read through, read through the whole letter, how much Paul appreciates the Philippians. It's a very warm letter as well. And another thing that, that I already mentioned that will become obvious as you read the letter that Paul's in prison. He's in chains. He's imprisoned 
while writing this letter. It's not like he's just off on some country vacation there in the Black Hills, just enjoying beautiful days. I've got time to write. I should probably write the Philippians, share some thoughts. No, he's he's in prison. He's he's suffering uh, for Jesus while serving him. And so we actually get to see in this letter his attitude towards suffering. Right? He doesn't gripe. He doesn't complain. It's real to him. It's hard to him. It drags him down. But his comfort is not his main goal. Right? Again, another key theme is how, do, how does Paul or how do any of us, how do we handle suffering and hardship? Can we still be joyful and peaceful when times are hard? And Paul shows how he can do that because his comfort's not the main thing. His plans are not, not the main thing. So he's even able to give thanks that while he's in prison, even though he's, that keeps him from traveling across the world and spreading the gospel, being in prison allows the gospel to spread in ways it wouldn't have otherwise. It's spreading there amongst this prison, amongst this imperial guard who he's with. And so Paul's really only goal is that Christ will be magnified. He even says that whether I'm living, whether I'm dying, whatever, I want Christ magnified. So if it comes from traveling to Spain and sharing the gospel, thumbs up, great. If it comes from getting thrown in prison, thumbs up, great. I want Christ magnified because I am in him and that is what brings me joy. And so what, what sort of suffering will the Philippians face? What will we face? It, it, it might be persecution and chains or things like that. Uh, there's hints that the Philippians are in danger of facing some of the things Paul faces. Uh, but really, the sort of dying, the suffering, the downward uh, kind of thing in life that Paul thinks the Philippians are going to face is dying to themselves, dying to their own desires, dying to their own pride, dying to their own rights. Humility and service is what Paul is after. He wants their whole life to have this Jesus shape. That's why chapter 2 is the center of the letter. We're going to come back to it over and over and over again. Chapter 2, where Paul talks about who, who Jesus is and what he did, the way he served and suffered to glory. It's just going to come up over and over again. So really, I'll just finish here by reading chapter 2 and give you a chance to encourage you. Read through this letter. What jumps out? What catches your attention? What's surprising to you? And what seems most challenging? What do Paul's commands seem most challenging? So let's read starting in uh, chapter 2, verse 1, and I'll read through verse 11, and then we'll be done. It says, So if there's any encouragement in Christ, any comfort from love, any participation in the Spirit, any affection and sympathy... Complete my joy by being of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind, and do nothing from rivalry or conceit, but in humility consider others more significant than yourselves. Let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus. He goes on to describe how it was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but made himself not, nothing, taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men, and being found in human form, he humbled himself by coming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. It's Philippians 2, verses 1 through 11. So again, we'll be back tomorrow morning to discuss uh, really the first three verses of chapter 3. We're going to go pretty slow as we take three weeks to go through 3 and 4. And I'm looking forward to, to being back together, right? On May 17th, we are going to have a, a, an open meeting for our church service, certainly um, if you're uncomfortable at all, feel sick at all, feel like you're around vulnerable, you are vulnerable around vulnerable pe people at all, stay home. It's great. If you do come, we encourage you to wear a mask. Like take precautions, take it seriously, just because things are opening back up. But we're excited to also be able to start taking these first steps towards reopening, and we do hope and pray that it goes well. And I look forward to seeing you soon. Take care.